By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have another match for you played at the Knights of Thorn tournament in the Netherlands. We had one episode before this. This is our second episode. And we are going to look at two beautiful decks. On the left, we have Kunert, who's playing Wrath of Rook, a white and red deck. And he is taking on a deck played by the tournament organizer, Mari. And he's playing with a Eureka deck. Now, his deck is just stunning. We're going to see a lot of really big, bad creatures. And, uh, I mean, I think this is going to be a super interesting matchup because Kunert is playing with Wrath of Gods. Mari, of course, wants to drop huge creatures. So, I mean, that's going to be really nice to see those two strategies go uh, uh, face to face. Now, before I start with the deck tech section, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this section, maybe watch the games first. The easiest way to do this is by checking the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the game action. And as for here, I'm going to continue with the deck tech. I'm gonna start with the deck of Kunit, Wrath of Rook. And here we see the deck of Kunert. So I've called it Wrath of Rook because of those two Wrath of Gods and those four Rook Eggs. Maybe it's good to start with the Rook Egg. A card from Arabian Nights, one red and three to cast for an O3 creature that reads, when it dies, you get a 4-4 bird flying token at the end of your turn, right? So at your end step, you get a 4-4 flyer. So basically what you want to do is you want to play your Rook Egg and you just want to, you know, kill your own egg. And of course that works very well with the card Wrath of God because that simply reads... All creatures in play are buried. So that's kind of part of the strategy here of Kundert. He's also playing with four Jade Statues. Now Jade Statue and Wrath of God work together really well because Jade Statue is just an artifact until you pay its activation cost. Then it becomes a 3-6 Golem. And uh, that can block, that can attack, that can do everything a normal creature can. But like I said, if you don't activate it, then of course it's just an artifact. So if you play Wrath of God... Um, you know, Jade Statue doesn't mind when it's in its artifact form. Now, if we look at the rest of the deck, we see a lot of burn, right? We see a Fireball, Disintegrate, Four Bolts. We also see that White Control Package, the Disenchants, the Swords, the Balance. We see some Control Artifacts here as well, Icy Manipulator, uh, Jam Day Tome. We also see two Blood Moon main. I think Blood Moon can be really good against a lot of decks, perhaps also against Mahdi's deck because he is playing three different colors. So Blood Moon could be good here. Uh, we see that he also plays with two land taxes to kind of try to find some basics. And of course, land tax can work really well with your Blood Moon. I mean, imagine a situation where he cast um, his plateau to play a Lantex. Later in the game, he casts a Blood Moon and he needs white mana. Then, of course, a Lantex can help him to find those white basics. So I think overall, this deck looks cool. I mean, it's it's kind of got an original mix of cards and it looks kind of strong because he's got a lot of answers to threats. And also, you know, he's got the dark damage plan. It's it's a very controlly deck, actually. So I'm really curious how it's going to do against the Eureka deck of Mahdi. Let's take a look at his brew. So this is the Eureka deck and I mean what a beauty look at all the altars as well and maybe it's good to first focus on Eureka because it's a sorcery that you don't see often reserve list very expensive uh, it's two green and two to cast so the casting cost is okay it's not expensive I was talking about the price obviously but what does it do so it's super cool it says starting with you each player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield repeat those process this process until no one puts a card onto the battlefield. In other words, if your opponent doesn't want to put anything on the, on the field, it's fine. You can just continue doing it. And the cool thing is you cannot counter whatever you're going to put on because you're actually not casting the spell. It's part of Eureka, you know? So you got to counter to Eureka. If you can't, then everything that's being thrown on the battlefield, there's nothing you can really do uh, against that. So that's pretty interesting. Now, if we look at his deck, he's got a lot of stuff to throw on the battlefield. I mean, look at that. Four Sheevan Dragons, four Mahamoti Jins, four Triskelion, one Force of Nature, Nico Bolas. I mean, how cool is that? He's also playing with a beautiful black bordered Fizuvan Double Ganger. I think it's so cool. I really love this deck. He's also playing with a Mirror Universe and with the Sword of the Ages. Now, I think Mirror Universe is really good because sometimes with these decks, maybe you don't find Eureka or you find it at the wrong moment or for whatever reason, you can take a lot of damage here. And then once you have your Eureka, you can, you know, play out your Mirror Universe and then the next turn 
swap the life total. So Mirror Universe can really be a, a lifesaver. I also like the Sword of the Ages. Sword of the Ages, a card from Legends. Six to cast, comes into play, tap. When it untaps, you can tap and sacrifice it together with any number of creatures and you can deal power equal or you can deal damage equal to the total amount of power to any target. So for example, if I've got a Mahamoti and a Shivan, I can sack those to the Sword of the Ages and deal 10 points of damage to my opponent, right? Um, for example, so Sword of the Ages is also a great way to win games in this deck if you play with so many fatties. There is also an Enchant World in this deck that I really, really like because it works so good with Eureka. And that card is Concordant Crossroads. So Concordant Crossroads basically gives all your creatures haste. So if you play Eureka in your first main, you can play out all your big creatures. Let's say a Shivan and a Mahamoti and a Force of Nature. Then you play out your Concordant Crossroads with that same Eureka. And that means that after Eureka is resolved, you have a Concordant Crossroads on the board with all those big creatures and you can attack immediately. So Concordant Crossroads makes it possible to have like a Eureka turn instant win. Now that is something that I'm really, really hoping to see. So Mari, I hope you can pull it off. Like I said, Mari is also the organizer of the tournament. So this is a nice moment for me to say thank you, Mari, for uh, organizing this. This is already tournament number eight of the Knights of Thorn. It's the oldest Magic the Gathering tournament in the Netherlands. Thank you, Mari, for organizing it. And now we're going to the match. Let's Eureka it out. Eureka versus Rukak. Game number one, here we go. Kunder sitting on the left, he's on the play, so he's playing the red and white Rook Egg deck. And he's passing turn to Madi, he's on the Eureka deck. And I think that's a Library of Alexandria he just drew from the top. Look at that! So Library of Alexandria, a card from Arabian Nights, you can tap it to get a colorless mana, or you can tap it to draw a card, but you can only use that ability if you have seven or more cards in hand. And guess what? Mahdi has seven cards in hand, so I'm expecting him to draw one now on the end step. We see Kundert putting a, a Mithras Factory on the table. Ooh, interesting. I guess he took a mulligan then. So now he's drawing that extra card. Playing a Taiga and passing the turn. So seven cards in hand for him. There's the attack. Will there be, um, for example, a Lightning Bolt? No, there will not. Mahdi's going to drop to 18. Checking his hand, I guess uh, he's going to draw first. Be on eight, play a land, and draw a card with uh, with the Loa. Or not, of course, he can also do it on end step. So there's the pass. And we see Kunder there drawing a card. Attacking again for two. So Mahdi's going to drop to 16. And on end step, he's going to draw a card from the low. I'm going to go up to eight again. And I was going to draw into card number nine, if I'm not mistaken. And I mean, this card advantage is definitely going to pay out. Because remember, he's playing with Eureka. So he's just going to get all the big fat creatures in his hand. And then at the right moment, play Eureka. He's got also a Black Lotus, it looks like, in his hand there. And I think it's, yeah, there's the Black Lotus. So does he have a Eureka? Does he have one? No, tapping five instead. Are we going to see a big creature maybe? Five mana. Oh, is she even dragon? I think he needs to tap an extra, right? Or am I missing something? To my knowledge, she even dragon is six to cast. Interesting here. I think both players are kind of missing this. So you're cracking the Lotus for three. And tapping two, you have five mana. She even is six to cast. Five five flyer, of course. Super strong creature. There's a swords to plowshares on the Shivan. So that means Maddie's gonna go up to 21, take two damage, gonna drop to 19. And there's the pass. So Maddie having seven in hand now, again gonna go up to eight. He's probably still looking... Ooh, dropping two Mox in here. Mox Pearl, Mox Emerald. Is he going to play another big creature? He kind of needs six. Six mana is the key point for Mahdi. Having access to Sheevans, Mahamoti, Jins, and Triskelions. There's a Lantex, which is going to work, actually. So that's good. A Lantex by Kundert. Passing the turn. No attack with the factory. That is interesting. And another card drawn here by Mahdi, going to go up to eight. 
There's another Mox, it seems, a Mox Ruby. Not playing it out, though. He's playing out the Taiga instead. Tapping six. So he's going to take damage from his own city. There is another Sheevan. So he's going to drop to 18. Are we going to see... It looks like Kundert wants to do something in response. Perhaps play a bolt on the life total. Yeah, play a bolt on the life total of Mati, putting him on 15. I wonder if he has maybe another Swords to take care of uh, of the Sheev. And of course, he's first going to use the Lantex. Lantex activation, going to find some basics. Two planes and a mountain. He's going to shuffle up. But a very interesting game so far. We've already seen two Sheevans being cast. That's kind of fun. And of course, that Loa is a big problem for Kundert. But let's see, you know, if, I mean, with Lantex, he also has some, uh, you know, card advantage going as well. And now he's got a Swords to Plowshares from the top, so he can play a Swords again. Swords on the Sheevan, so Mahdi's going to go back up to 20. He's going to gain 5, probably going to take 2, so he's going to end up on 18, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that's it, I'm passing the turn. So Mahdi is now going to draw to card number 7. Now he's going to draw card number 8 with the library. He's got 6 mana open. Remember, that's kind of the uh, the place where he wants to be. Are we going to see Eureka here? Oh, tapping 4! There is the Eureka. Oh, <laughs> this is so cool. I love it. So now they can just play out whatever. Uh, first thing, Maha Moti Jin, now it's the turn back to Kundert. Does he want to play anything from his hand, playing a land? Now it's the turn to Mahdi again, another Maha Moti Jin. There's a plane to pass, another Maha Moti Jin. This is insane. A Vesuvan double ganger, four Maha Moti Jin on the table. This is epic. Oh man. I think if you're Kundert, he now needs a Wrath of God. If he's got a Wrath, are we going to see a Concordant Crossroads by Mahdi? Or are we going to see a Concordant Crossroads? Oh, this is so interesting. A Wheel of Fortune. He's going to draw seven new cards. If he can find... Oh, he's tapped out, though. I wanted to say, if he can find a Concordant Crossroads... Oh, look at the balance here. He cannot play it because it's a sorcery. Cannot use it. He is playing a Disenchant and a Bolt. Oh, that balance would have been so good. That balance would have been so good. And now both players are going to draw seven new ones. So this is really bad news for Kunder. That balance would have been so brutal for Mahdi. But of course, it's a sorcery, so he couldn't play it because we're still in Mahdi's turn. And um, I'm not sure if Mahdi had a land drop, actually. I kind of missed that. If he didn't, then he can now play a... If he has another Taiga, for example, he could do Taiga, Taiga Crossroads win the game. Because with the Crossroads, he can attack immediately. And it looks like he can't. Passing the turn. So there's one turn here for Kunder to set things straight. So can he do a tax activation? We've got two, four, five lands and five lands on the side of Kunder. Actually, six lands on the side of Kunder. So no activation. He has found an Icy Manipulator that's not going to be enough. He also has a Swords in hand, I believe. So he can Swords one Jin. He can tap down another. He's got enough mana to do both of those things. So there's a Swords on the Mahamoti. So five more life for Kundra. Going to go up to 19. There's the Icy. And then probably a pass. So, I mean, it's going to be painful for Kundra, but at least he's buying himself some time trying to find that Wrath of God. He's playing with two of those in his deck. So if he can find a Wrath, he can clear the table. Another Eureka in hand, by the way, for Mahdi. That will be pretty cool. Just play another one. Who cares? It's fun. He still has that Loa, so he can... Okay, he's now going to draw into card number eight. I think he's got eight cards in hand now. So he first has to drop a land. Exactly. Drops a land. Draws card number... Eight with the Library of Alexandria. That Loa and Eureka together are just insane. Like Loa in general is insane, but especially in this deck with the Eureka. We see another Mahamoti Jin in hand for Mahdi. I mean, he could go for the Eureka play. 
I mean, why not? It's fun. He could, of course, strip uh, Source first before playing Eureka. I would, I would probably go for the planes here. Oh, he's going for the factory. Interesting. The reason I'm saying planes is okay. So now he's using the mana to tap something down the side of Madi. The reason I'm saying planes is that maybe, you know, Kundert has another swords in hand. You're kind of forcing him to or use the swords or accept the fact that the planes get tapped. And also, it's protection from a, uh, a possible disenchant. There is a Chaos Orb. He's going to flip the Chaos Orb on the Icy Manipulator. And it's a hit. Beautiful flip by Madi. Let's see what he can do next. He's got, I mean, he's got a Eureka in hand. He's got a Mamoti Jin in hand. So he could do that. But he's just attacking for 10. Just attacking with two Mamoti Jins. You know, casual day at the office. And now Madi still needing to find a solution. I think, is that another Swords in hand there from the top? I'm not quite sure. It's hard to see. There's a Plateau. Even if he finds one more Swords, he's still going to lose. He's on 10. Remember, it's just game number one, though. Are we going to see a Wrath of God? No, it's an Icy. Oh, for a moment there, I thought maybe it's a Wrath, but he wasn't tapping double white, so... If he now has a Swords, he could Swords one, tap the other, and he could survive. And that's exactly what he does. Another Swords to Plowshares. This is number three already. Ooh, are we going to see a counter spell though? Going to go to 18. There's a Mana Drain. So draining it. Passing the turn. Yeah, I think this is the end of the line. And it's not a surprise, of course, if you uh, take into consideration that Maddie started this game with the Library of Alexandria. It's so tough if you don't have an answer to that. And uh, like I said, especially with the Eureka build, because you can just find your big fatties and your Eureka and, and actually do what Maddie did. So he's now going to attack for 15, right? Of course, Kund can tap one down, so he's going to take 10. He's on 10. That's going to be end of the line, unless he's got his fourth swords in hand, but it's very unlikely. There's a regrowth. Is he going to do the responsible thing, which is regrowing the mana drain? Yeah, that's what he does. Makes sense. Makes sense. So going through his hand. So he's going to declare attackers in response. Mighty's going to tap one, then take 10. Sorry, Kundert's going to tap one, then take 10 damage. I think, Kundert, you've done really well. What you really needed was or that balance, but you couldn't play it out because of that wheel play. Or find a Wrath of God. And even then it's tough because you're still playing against that active Loa. Anyway, both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And I'm really looking forward to game number two. Because this was a lot of fun. Game number two. Here we go. So it's one game up for Maddie. So that means Kundert is on the play. Starting with the Plateau into a Soul Ring. That's a promising start. Maybe he can ramp up to a Rook Egg in turn two. That would be funny. We see a tropical island tapping. There's also a soul ring for Madi, and I believe Madi has a Eureka in hand. No, it's a force of nature. It's not a Eureka. Trying to peek into those hands. There's a planes by Kundert and a pass. So Kundert having a planes, another plateau in hand. Kind of hard to see the rest of his hand. There's a city of brass by Madi. Does he have a Eureka? That's like always the question when you play against a Eureka deck. <laughs> and then he's on four mana. You're like, does he have a Eureka? Tapping three though. Untapping it again. Is that a time walk in his hand? Yeah, do you want to use it? I mean, if you're using time walk right now, it's it's more like a tempo play and you're drawing a card. It's not as powerful as time walk can be, of course, in a Eureka build. But it's not, I mean, it's not bad. It's still, still good. It looks like he's going for other options, though. I think that's a Demonic Tutor there in his hand that he's picked up now. And what do you want a Demonic for? I mean, he could Demonic. He's going to take a damage from the city, it seems. I think he's going to play the Demonic. Yeah, there's a Demonic Tutor. I think he's going to go... Is he going to go for Eureka? That would be fun. Could, of course, go for, you know, the boring, efficient play Ancestral Recall. Yes, yeah, going for Eureka. I love it. 
I really like this deck. So next turn, you can Eureka off again. I mean, I'm a little bit um, um, torn apart because one side of me really wants to see this Eureka and to see again Mari, you know, smashing face with big bad creatures. On the other hand, I also like Kundert's uh, deck and we haven't really seen it in action. So I'm also hoping that Kundert gets a chance. At least there's a Swords there in his hand. And there's a pass. So now we're probably going to see a Eureka. There is a trap. He's got enough mana. Is he going to do it though? No, he's going to pass. I'm a little bit surprised here. He's going to be patient. There we see a Felwer Stone and a pass. So Kunert not really finding anything. I mean, these Eureka decks are usually uh, fragile. Oh, this is interesting. A mana drain. Does that mean that he has maybe um, a Wheel of Fortune in hand? And what I wanted to say is the Eureka decks are usually vulnerable at the early stages of the game, but Kundert unable to put any pressure on. Tapping two, tra two traps probably for two green, then using the two mana from the mana drain. There's Eureka! And now the game begins. What are we going to see? Force of Nature. <laughs> this is so brutal. Nico Bolas! Wow, Triskelion! This is insane! And look at that, Kundert not doing anything, not having anything in hand. I hope for Kundert, I do believe, is that red card? Ooh, what else is he going to do? Is Are we now going to see... There's a time walk! This is insane! That time walk, of course, that he still had. He was waiting for the moment to do that, to play time walk and uh, Eureka. That makes absolute sense. We see a sword here on Nico Bolas. But Kundert is in so much trouble here. Oh man. And look at that. There's the pass. So now now Maddie's going to take his extra turn from the time walk. He's going to take Is he going to take the damage? He's going to pay for it. So he's going to take two damage from his own city of brasses. He can attack for 14. Oh, we're going to see another one. Taking care of business here. He is of course giving Maddie a lot of life though. He's going to go up to 31 if I'm not mistaken. But uh, at least, at least Kundert is kind of managing to uh, basically keep himself alive. So he's only going to take four damage. Managed to take care of the Force of Nature and the Nico Bolas. But I'm really, really liking this Eureka deck. It must feel so good to cast these big creatures. Or actually, I should say play them off of Eureka. Uh, and there's a um, Mishra's Factory in the pass. Only two cards in hand now, it seems, for Mahdi. Is this just going to be a land? Yep, it's going to be trap number three. Tapping three mana and... Oh, wow, a time twister. This is ideal. After emptying that hand, then we see a bolt to the face of Mahdi, probably. Ooh, he's losing a Wrath of God. But of course, he can shuffle them back in. So he played the Bolt on the Trike. And that actually makes sense. Because if he now uh, finds a second Bolt, he can kill the Trike. And I mean, look at the life total of Mahdi. He's on 31 anyway. So I think life-wise, this makes absolute sense for Kunder to just go for the Trike. Because the difference between 31 and 28, it doesn't really matter uh, at this point. So seven new cards for both players. I mean, this is so much fun. On one on one side of the table, you've got Kundert, who's got quite a lot of answers. And on the other side of the table, you've got Maddie, who's playing out a lot of threats. So it's a really nice dynamic between these two players. So he still has four untapped, already played out a land. Gonna take two points of damage. Is he gonna play another Eureka? He's now on 29. Another Eureka! This is insane! This is insane! Shiva and Dragon! Oh, Lantex on the side of Madi. Sorry, on the side of Kundert. Uh, Madi here dropping a Taiga. There's a Fower Stone. There's a Sylvan. Okay, not really the big bad creatures. Well, I mean, Shiva is still pretty big. Okay, Sarah Angel. Oh, Concordant Crossroads. So this is uh, the combination I talked about in the deck tech section of this video. Concordant Crossroads and Eureka, they work together so well. 
There we see a mountain by Kundert. Oh, wow. A Chaos Orb. He can now flip on the Angel if he wants to. I wonder if he wants to, actually. I guess he wants to. Maybe flip on the Angel because then he can just attack. Yeah, he's going to probably flip here. Yeah, going to flip on the Angel so he can just attack. Is there going to be a response by Kundert? If he's got a disenchant, he can disenchant the Chaos Orb in response of the activation. I mean, if you have it, I would do it. He can also, of course, disenchant a trike. It is a little bit double. I think for the outcome, it doesn't matter much because he's probably going to take the damage from the Sheevan and, and decides to trade the Angel for the trike. Um, unless, of course, he's got another Bolt in hand. So here we do see the disenchant. He could, of course, also choose to disenchant the Concordant Crossroads. That would be another option. I believe that's a fireball in hand of Kundert. I'm not quite sure. So only attacking with the Sheevan here. He's going to take the damage, it seems. Going to drop to 11. And there's the pass turn. Can he activate the tax? Three? No, he cannot. He's got seven lands. Mari only has six. Mari also has that Sylvan Library, which is really good because Mari's on 29. So he can easily draw two extra cards next turn. It's looking so bad for Kundert. What he needs is a Disenchant and a Wrath. Even if that card's a Fireball, does he have enough to bowl to kill both creatures? Let's have a look. I mean, if he's got a Fireball, he's probably going to use it. Tapping three here. Playing a Blood Moon. Okay, so maybe it wasn't a Fireball, but it was a Blood Moon in hand. Ooh, but he is counting. Five, so he's going to fireball then the dragon. I think that's a good decision because another way what he could have... He didn't have enough mana to kill both anyway. And now the Blood Moon is a big problem for Mari. Because he now only has mountains. And then he's also going to attack Mari, of course, for four with the Sarah Angel. So it's actually, this is really, this is a really good turn here for, for Kundert. And I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of impressed uh, by Kundert and, and the way that he's still in this, in this second game. So now Mari's going to look at three cards. He's on 25. I mean, I'm expecting him to take at least one extra card here. Putting the cards back. Looking at his one card in hand before drawing. Trying to decide what to do. He's just going to draw the one. Interesting. He's going to tap three. Is there a well, wheel of fortune? That explains it. He found a wheel. That also means he's giving Kundert, of course, seven new cards. Kundert almost tapped out. Only has one white open. Enough, of course, for a possible sorts. And remember, um, you know, Mari still has that uh, concordant crossroads. So if Mari can find a way to get rid of the Blood Moon, then again, he's already played his Chaos Orb. The Blood Moon is really a big problem for Mari. I mean, if he can find the right Moxen, of course, Black Lotus that he hasn't played yet. You know, maybe Kundert's lucky and Mari can simply not do anything with the cards that he's found off of his Wheel of Fortune. That would be awesome for Mari. Uh, sorry, for Kundert. It looks like Mari is really in the tank here. So no easy choices for him. We're going to see a land, I assume. Okay, so at least it's a green source, a Mox Emerald. There is another Sylvan. Not really something that uh, Kunert's going to worry about too much. There is a Taiga, which is just a mountain because of the Blood Moon. So he doesn't have double green. There's an attack for four. That makes sense. And this is kind of tough, right? There we see a Swords. I wonder if uh, if Mahdi is going to make the decision to let the try kill itself. Probably not. He's probably just going to throw three damage on the life total here. Yeah, so we see Kundert going down to eight. 
And uh, he gains one life, I believe, then from the trike, because then it's a 1 1. So 8 for Kundert, 26 for Mahdi. But of course, Mahdi is facing the Blood Moon. This is a really interesting match. Finally, we see a Rook Egg. Attack for 4. So he's going to go down to 22 and a pass. Remember, he cannot attack with the factory because it's a mountain. And Amadi is going to dig a little deeper to try to find the cards he needs. You can really see him think. You can see those, those wheels in his brain slowly turning, trying to think, how can I get out of this? Should I... Draw an extra card. Should I draw two extra, maybe? And I think now they're discussing how the Sylvan works in this scenario. And he's going to take all the cards. Look at that. So he's going to take eight points of damage, going from 22 down to 14. And then he can look at two more cards with his other Sylvan. But, I mean, 14 is really low. That means next attack, if the Sarah survives, he can put Mari on 10. Then he's on like a three-turn clock. I mean, this is pretty big. I wonder, I mean, if Mahdi can maybe find, like, his Black Lotus, he can use his Lotus to maybe cast another Eureka and dump all his big creatures. And remember, he still has the Concordant Crossroads, so the game could still be finished quite, quite quickly. Lots of cards in hand there for Mahdi. The question is, can he actually play them out because of the Blood Moon? Tapping Four, tapping six. Okay, so we're going to see a Sheevan, I assume. Sheevan Dragon, of course, being a red creature. Ooh, we're going to see a Trike instead. So this is kind of good, really good news for Kundert. Like, a Sheevan would be really scary. A Trike is not great, but not a problem. If Maddie attacks with the Trike, he can simply block it on the egg. That's actually what Kundert wants. So I was really kind of expecting to see a Sheevan here. He hasn't played a single Sheevan yet. He's got four in the deck. So Mahdi thinking, probably not too happy with the current situation. He's on 14. I mean, he, he, he doesn't want to attack. You don't want to give Kunert a 4-4 four, four flyer. Um, yeah, Kunert's on 8. There's the pass. Yeah, that makes sense. This is really good news, actually, for Kunert. Because despite the fact that Mahdi drew two extra cards the last turn, he couldn't find any... Better play to make than just cast a Triskelion. Tapping four. Are we going to see another Rook Egg? There's a book. Even better. <laughs> I guess there's not much here that Mahdi can do. I mean, he doesn't have blue sources. It looks like he is considering playing a card, though. He's saying, okay, it resolves. There's the attack for four. Mine's going to drop to ten. Now he's going to draw an extra card. Okay, that's a sword. Is it a sword? I believe it's kind of hard to see. And Kundert's so close to making it a 1-1 one -one here. And that will be really sweet because that means we're going to get a game um, number three, which is always great. But we're not there yet, of course. Mahdi's still on 10. That means that Kundert needs three more combat steps with the Sarah Angel to win it. And that's quite a lot, actually. Especially since Mahdi has that Sylvan. Although, I guess this is the last turn where Mahdi can look at three fresh cards because he can't really afford to draw any extra cards. He is drawing extra cards, though. Is he going to go to six? Oh, he's going to take the risk. Going to go down to six. Then the other Sylvan activates, so he can look at some cards again. Two cards. 
putting them back in any order. But he's on six now, so a two-turn clock. I wonder if he found an answer here. What is he going to do? Okay, there's a Mox Pearl. That's not going to help him much, though. The Bayou is just a mount. It's not going to help him much. Has he found a Sheevan? Another trike. Okay, that works, because with the trikes, he can kill the Sarah. And, of course, he can also deal six damage to Kundert. He'll, he'll be on two, but that's not enough. Interesting situation here. I think what Mahdi needs to do is simply kill the Sari. He doesn't have to do it now, of course. He can just wait. With one Shivan in the bin, he still has three Shivan dragons in the deck. If he can just find one more Shivan. He's really in the tank here. He's probably thinking, I should have I should be winning this game. I should have won this game a long time ago. Remember that turn where he played Force of Nature, Nico Bolas. And a time walk. I mean that was just crazy. But Kundert managed to survive with a lot of swords. Managed to stay into the game, and here we are. Madi on six, Kundert on eight. And it's Madi's turn. He just played out the second Triskelion. And it looks like he's trying to find a way to push through. Maybe he's wondering what would happen if I would attack with both trikes. Because then Kundert has to block on the Sarah Angel and on the Rook Egg. But the thing is that Kunder then gets a 4-4 bird back, which I think is not what you want if you're if you're Maddie. But look at this, he is attacking. Interesting move, attacking with both. In response, ooh, this is interesting. If he's got another... So he's declaring blocks first, and before damage is dealt, he's probably going to do something. Exactly, in response, going to sort the other one before damage is dealt. So that means 3 damage... On the life of Kundert, he's going to drop to 5. He's going to block here with the Rook Egg. So the Rook Egg's going to die and he's going to get... Ooh, he's not doing that actually. He's going to take the counter self. That is a smart move. In that case, what he could have done... Dealing 2 more points of damage to Kundert, putting him on 3. What he could have done is also kill the Sarah. Maybe that would have been my line of play, but then again, I don't know what the hand of Matty is at this point, but I guess what I would have done, maybe... Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. I would have taken the counters off of the trike that was being sort, sorted to go on the Sarah and then kill the Sarah as well with the counter from the other trike. Because then I wouldn't take any damage. Matty now being on six, he's probably going to go to two. Kundert's first going to draw another card. There's the attack. So Mari's going to go to two. Ooh, so close. Mari's on two. Kundert's on three. If Mari can find another trike, but he's played out so many trikes. That's a demonic tutor, though. But he doesn't have black. Oh, he cannot play the, the tutor. The Blood Moon is really the MVP of this match. It is doing so much work here for Kundert. I mean, the entire deck of, of Mahdi is just wrecked by this single Blood Moon. Looking at the cards again, he's trying to find a way out of it. If he could, could play the Demonic, he would win the game. But the fact of the matter is he doesn't have any black mana because of the Blood Moon. He cannot find a Mox Jet, cannot find a Black Lotus... It looks like it's the end of the line. He, he, he is holding up his finger, though, like, I have one more plan. Show us the plan, Mahdi. Show us the plan. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Am I dead or no? 
He's got the 2 2 trike. Kundert's on 3, so he can put him on 2. But he's going to die. So he needs to do more than that. If he can find a trike, he wins it. Going through his hand again. Passing the turn, it seems. Ooh, are we going to see a victory? Game number two here. Is it going to be a 1-1? One -one? There's a plateau. He's first going to use the book before attacking. This is exciting stuff. Attacking here. Is he going to win it? Going to put him on two. And what is he going to do? Crumble his own trike. That is a great move. That's going to give him six. He's going to go back up to eight. Going to take four. I can't believe this, but he's still alive. I mean, this is insane. He's going to drop to four. Okay, there we see a Suchi. I thought he was a gunner, but this is a way, of course, to prolong his life at least for one more turn. If he can find a trike, he wins it. If he can find a Sheevan, yeah, this is a really good move, playing a second Blood Moon, because, you know, in case Mari finds some kind of weird way to get rid of the first one, the second one is still there. There we see a Eureka there. One of the cards Mari could choose from, but he doesn't have to double green. He's not going to have to double green with the Blood Moons. He really needs to find a Black Lotus, I believe, to get him out of this. And that's it. That's it. That's the game. So we see a pass, and that's it. Oh, 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 oh what, an, what an exciting game number two, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy that I have this match here on the channel. I can really enjoy looking at these two players battling it out. This is quality magic. And I also want to give a big thank you to De Young for recording these matches. But, um, oh man, this is exciting, exciting stuff. So we're going to go to an old decisive game number three. Game number three, here we go. So we have Mari on the play. What an exciting match this has been so far. A lot of fun to watch. Soul Ring turn one here, taking a damage from his own city, dropping to 19. There's a plateau by Kundert and a pass. There's a Tiger. Are we going to see Eureka? I guess we're not because he's tapping three. We are going to see a Time Walk though. He is going to drop to 18. So he's just going to take an extra turn. Does give him some tempo advantage. You can drop a land. So then he's two lands ahead of Kundert. And remember, I mean, six mana is really, really good for um, for Mari as well. You know, if you can, for example, find a trop now and next turn drop another land, then potentially you can start casting uh, Shivan Dragons, Juzem Jins, Triskelions. Sorry, I meant Mahamoti Jins, of course, not Juzem Jins. Got confused there. Mari a little bit in the tank. Does he have a land drop? Of course. It all starts with that. If he doesn't have enough land, he does not. He's passing the turn. That is killer for Mari here. It opens up some possibilities. No disenchant from Kundert. Does have a red elemental blast in hand. Any sorts to plowshares. But a disenchant would have been really nice considering Mari is already in mana, mana problems. So he could disenchant the soul ring. Is that a duel in hand? Looks like a bayou. Not quite sure. And is he, he's like, I'm not sure if I want to play the bayou. Maybe it's something else. I can't see. It looks like a duel end from this side, from my side. But I guess it's not because he's passing the turn. So again, no land drop for Mahdi. A Plains and a Pass. And that's the thing, of course, with, with Kundert's deck. It's also hard to put early pressure on with Kundert's deck. He's not playing with, for example, a Savannah line. You know, Savannah line would be great. Those early, uh, you know, turns of the game to put some pressure on the life total of Mahdi. But he's really giving Mahdi uh, time here to kind of try to get back into this. 
Oh, that's a Black Lotus. So I thought the Black Lotus was a Bayou, but it's a Black Lotus instead. Tapping four here. Are we going to see a Eureka? There's a Eureka. Wow. There we see a Triskelion and a pass. There we see a Rook Egg from Kundert. There's a Vesuvan Double Ganger copying the trike. And there we see a Sarah Angel by Kundert. So actually for Kundert, this Eureka is also not too bad and it's not too devastating yet for Kundert. We don't see a big 5-6 flyer or 5-5 flyer. Or what's coming? Oh, that's a mirror universe there from Mari. Again, not too problematic yet. There we see, oh, Concordant Crossroads doesn't matter that much i mean yes madi can attack for eight but remember kunder does have that annoying rook egg so this is quite interesting i wonder what madi's going to do right now is he just going to turn both of his creatures sideways that would be interesting i mean in a way the, the, the trike works together quite well with the rook egg because you know, if Kunder blocks with the Rook Egg, he can simply take the counters off so that the Trike is too small to kill the Rook Egg. We saw that in game number two. So that is really nice for Mari that he has those options. On the other hand, you don't want to be forced to kind of take counters off. One of the things he could do here is, um, you know, attack with both. Or just with one for that matter and, and, and see how Kunder blocks. And if he blocks on the Rook Egg, he could take the counters off to kill, for example, the Sarah Angel. But then he has to take four counters off in total, which is pretty steep. So I can I understand that, that Mahdi is not attacking here. There we see the attack by the Sarah. And of course, Mahdi has that Mirror Universe. Now remember, you can only use Mirror Universe in your upkeep. So it is kind of limited. And we see Mahdi here dropping to 13. I wonder, Kunert doesn't play a disenchant, passes to turn untap upkeep. He can now use the Mirror Universe. I mean, that's going to give him 7 life. Ooh, it looks like he's going to do something. He's going to kill the Sarah Angel here. Interesting. Oh, he's going to copy the Sarah Angel. Ooh, okay. So, he's going to put the counters off, put 3 damage on the Sarah. Then he's going to... Oh, and he's going to plow his own Sarah Angel. So that Mahdi cannot choose the Sarah. There is... Oh, look at this Mana Drain and a Red Elemental Blast on the Mana Drain. So that means that before the Vesuvian can copy the Sarah Angel, the Sarah Angel is gone because of the Swords to Plowshares. So that means four life for Kundert. And this was an interesting plan, actually by Mahdi because Mahdi wanted to put the counters on the Sarah and now he's going to copy the trike again and he's going to get three more counters back wow I've never seen this uh, combo or synergy before so this looks really cool to me um, please let me know in the comments if it's possible but by the looks of it what's happening here is that Mahdi is taking the counters off from his strike right dealing three damage to the sarah then in his upkeep saying i want to copy your sarah angel in response we see a lot of stuff happening here by the way in the meanwhile but i'm trying to explain the situation um in response kundert plays the swords to plowshares on his own sarah angel right so then his sarah angel goes out that means that madi can no longer copy it with the vesuvian so he has to choose a new target and he chooses the trike as a new target Wow. And then after that, in the main phase of Mahdi, by the way, Mahdi casts a Time Twister. And in response, Kundert played a um, Lightning Bolt on the Trike. But wow, what a what a match, man. This is the kind of magic where <laughs> I, I, I need a moment to think, what did I just see? What did just happen? But now the Time Twister resolves. So both players are going to draw seven new cards. Remember, Mahdi still has that a concordant crossroads in hand of course uh, sorry in play 
Of course, the problem for Maddie here is mana, so hopefully he can find some land. And I really enjoyed seeing that synergy between Vesuvan Doubleganger and Triskelion. And now Maddie is gonna probably just play out a land. There we see another Taiga, okay. Gonna tap two. What could he play for two? Of course, a Sylvan. Ooh, and it's Sylvan and Mirror Universe work together really, really well. But it is a big risk though, because Kunder just drew seven new cards, probably has a Disenchant in there. But maybe he's unlucky, maybe he cannot find a Disenchant. We do see a Swords, a Land Tax. I think I see a Strip Mine there, so he's gonna strip the city, that makes sense. City is gone. He can attack for two, of course. The problem here is for Kundert is really that mirror universe. There's a Soaring, tapping the Soaring for a Felwer Stone. He doesn't have a disenchant in hand. And then the big question is, is Mari now going to trade lives or does he have the patience? Ooh, he's going to put himself on nine. Then he's going to swap lives. I think this is a good decision. You don't want to wait too long. And then, of course, he can uh, then get the Sylvan in his draw step. And we do see a Swords here on the Vesuvan. Yeah, because that's going to at least give Kunert one more life. Then he's going to go up to 10. Right? He could do that in, in response. And Kunert was on 22, so Mari's going to go up to 22. Oh, 23. Okay, I think the way he could have ordered this is, you know, play the swords in response to the Mirror Universe activation. That would mean that he would get an extra life for Kundert, but it's just one life. I don't think it's going to matter that much. And he's going to draw some extra cards. So he's going to drop to 15, it seems. So he's going to draw two extra cards. Okay, he's going to take eight damage. That makes sense. Ooh, Ancestral Recall. Oh, this is looking bad. Ooh, there though is the Red Elemental Blast. Now he's tapping four to play Eureka. Ooh, and he still has Concordant Crossroads on the board. There's a Trike. There's a land tax. There's another trike. There's a sword of the ages coming into play. Tap though. He cannot kill him though. I think. Let's see how Mari's going to play this out. Two cards in hand, but all his mana is tapped. I mean, what he could do is simply attack with both. Then, of course, yeah, I think that's a good move. So, attacking with both. Then he's going to block on a Rook Egg. Okay, we're going to see a response, though. Oh, he's going to animate his factory. He still has that factory, of course. That factory is a 2-2. It can pump itself to a 3-3. I forgot all about the factory, to be honest. This is going to be interesting. What is he going to do? And... It looks like Mari now wants to kill the factory. I'm not sure if I would. I would just wait for Kundert here to declare blockers. Yeah, so he's going to block. and This is how he's going to block. And now Mari can respond before damage is dealt to take some counters off. So he's going to take two counters off. And I shoot them to Kundert. So Kundert's on seven. Then he's going to lose the factory to that block, so trike to factory. 
So Kundert can make it 3-3, three, three, but that doesn't matter because the trike is a 4-4, four, four, so I think he's going to lose that. And then Kundert will still be on 7. And there's the pass. Yeah, exactly. So that factory's going to die. Now he's going to untap. He's got 3 lands, so there's no tax activation. And I think that big dice, by the way, is the turn clock. So there are five more turns. Remember, this is a tournament, so you have 50 minutes to play a match. There's a Sarah Angel, so maybe Kundert can make this into a draw. Of course, Kundert also has that Sword of the Ages, though. So Sword of the Ages, tap and sack an X amount of creatures deal damage equal to their power to any target. So that can be to the life total of Kundert as well. So he's got six damage on the board, but he needs one more point of damage to finish Kundert off. This, ha this, this is such an interesting match. I'm really enjoying it. Two great, beautiful decks battling it out. Mahdi on 15, looked at his cards with the Sylvan, only drew one. I feel like this match deserves a winner. Tapping four. Another Eureka. Okay, that's fun. Oh, Shivan Dragon. That means it's his game. Shivan Dragon gives the win to Mahdi because of that Sword of the Ages. We can sack everything to Sword of the Ages and win the game. What a beautiful, beautiful match. Thank you so much, Kunert and Mahdi, for bringing your decks to the table. This was awesome. And that was the episode for today and what an episode it was. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. I just love these type of matches. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell because then you will be notified when I put another episode up. And next week I will be showing you another match played at the Knights of Thorn. This is edition number eight. So if you like this, please come back next week for more. And if you like the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron of my channel by checking out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and there you can find out how you can become a supporter of Timmy Talks and help me to continue giving you this content. I would also like to give a big shout out and thank you to D because D was the person that recorded all these matches in pristine condition. So thank you so much, D. I'm really enjoying the quality here and looking back at these matches. And for now, I'm going to say thank you for watching and see you next time. Let's go to the end scroll.